The story of British civil defence, that is, preparing the country for the aftermath of a nuclear weapons attack, is a story that few people know. Indeed, the existence of a nuclear deterrent, by its very nature, stops most of us from thinking about the need for civil defence, and whether, if it was needed, Britain would be able to deliver. In the early 1950s, Britain did in fact have a well-funded civil defence programme that was taken very seriously. The difficult economic situation of the same period, however, meant that cuts needed to be made, and an expensive civil defence project that may never be used was a clear and easy target. There were, however, two camps. On the one side were people like the then Home Secretary, Gwilym Lloyd George, a younger son of the former Prime Minister, who believed that the government had a moral duty to protect, it, protect its people against any possible eventualities, and that to make cuts in civil defence was a negligent and immoral act. On the other side were men like Harold Macmillan, who, in the Eden government, was Chancellor of the Exchequer. Macmillan and his co cohort believed that the huge sums of money that were being poured into the civil defence programme could be better spent elsewhere, and the introduction of a deterrent would be enough to ensure that no further precautions would need to be taken. In between the two was Anthony Eden. He was ambivalent about the situation and had factions constantly vying between each other in the cabinet. Things changed in 1957, however, when Macmillan succeeded Eden as Prime Minister after the former's disgrace in the Suez Crisis. Once in power, Macmillan made it one of his first moves to sack Lloyd George, thereby eradicating civil defence's main proponent. The 1957 Defence White Paper, dubbed the Sands White Paper after the new Defence Secretary, consequently made swinging cuts to the civil defence budget, wiping it off the government's agenda permanently.